Hello. So this lesson is the next part of aerobic respiration. So in the last lesson, we were looking at how ATP um, is made and how it's used um, for the breakdown of glucose. But today we're going to look into that in a little bit more detail um, at the two stages of aerobic respiration. So um, the first part of this lesson is all about something called glycolysis. This is the first stage of respiration. And we're going to learn a little bit about um, what's involved, the substrates and products of this stage, uh, how much ATP do we actually get from this first stage, um, and finding out where it takes place in a cell and whether or not this is aerobic or anaerobic. Um, so think back to the last lesson, and um, we looked at the basic respiration equation. You should be able to remember this. So the two substrates, the things that are needed, are glucose and oxygen. And the products of this are energy. And of course, that energy we learned in the last lesson is used uh, to produce ATP, which is our storage molecule of energy. But we also get two waste products, which are carbon dioxide and water. So today we're gonna have a wee bit of a closer look at how these molecules are actually used. So some things to think about, just linking back to other prior learning in the course, how do molecules of glucose and oxygen actually get into the cell? So you need to remember that this, um, this happens through diffusion. So the two molecules will diffuse into the cell from a high concentration outside to a low concentration inside. Now, if you're a unicellular organism, like a bacteria or something, then that will happen. It'll just diffuse straight into the cell. And then our waste products, the carbon dioxide and water, will diffuse out. For larger organisms like us, for humans, we have our transport systems. So blood brings the food and glucose to the cells, but then they still diffuse in and the waste products diffuse out into the blood. Okay. Where do most chemical reactions take place in the cell? So remember, uh, think back to the cell structure topic. So one of the structures inside a cell is where most chemical reactions take place, and that is the cytoplasm. So in the last lesson, we also were uh, finding out about how aerobic respiration is a series of enzyme-controlled chemical reactions. And we need oxygen to release the chemical energy from glucose to form ATP. And I said to you, it was a little bit like how a fire needs oxygen for energy to be released from the fuel. It's the same idea in cells. If there's no oxygen, we will not get as much energy from our glucose. So in aerobic respiration, we will need oxygen to get the maximum amount of ATP from our glucose. So aerobic respiration occurs in two main steps. The first step is called glycolysis. And this is where we break down glucose into pyruvate. We're going to focus on that uh, in the first part of this lesson. And then the second stage is where we break this pyruvate down into carbon dioxide and water. The first stage, glycolysis, takes place in the cytoplasm, where most chemical reactions take place. But the second stage, we'll find out more about later, occurs in the mitochondria. So. Our first stage, glycolysis, remember that the whole process is this equation up at the top. Um, so let's we'll move these out of the way just now. So this equation, this is the whole aerobic respiration process. The first stage, glycolysis, is where we go from breaking our big glucose molecule down into two slightly smaller molecules, which are called pyruvate. And when we do that, when we break any molecule apart, when we break these chemical bonds apart, that releases energy. And we get enough energy from this first stage to generate two molecules of ATP. So not very much, not a lot of energy coming from this stage, but it's, it's a start. And we can see that here, there's our glucose. Glucose contains six carbon atoms. That's what these circles represent. And when we break that down into two smaller molecules, we still have six carbon atoms because we will have two lots. And we can see that here in this picture. So one glucose molecule broken down into two 
pyruvate molecules, and we get two ATP from that. Now, it's important to note that there was no oxygen mentioned here. This is an anaerobic stage, okay? There's no oxygen involved, and this happens in the cytoplasm. Okay, what I want you to do now is have a wee look at these questions, pause the video, uh, and give them a go. Try and answer them in your jotter. Okay, so we'll have a wee look at the answers to these questions now. Um, so, the model answer is how we could build these answers into something, uh, into a more complex note. So if we have a look at this, what is glycolysis? What are the substrates and products? So glycolysis is the first stage of aerobic respiration. The substrate is glucose and the products are our pyruvate and ATP, which we can see here. Okay, this then asks us how many molecules of the product are, are produced from one molecule of glucose. So it would be two molecules of ATP and two molecules of pyruvate. The third question, is oxygen required for glycolysis to take place? The answer is no. There's no oxygen coming into this. So this is an anaerobic um, process. Where in a cell does glycolysis take place? That is the cytoplasm. And then finally, how many molecules of ATP are produced from one molecule of glucose? The answer is two from this stage. Okay, it may be worth taking down this note. Um, if your answers are not in sentences, this might make a little bit more sense. So feel free to pause the video and take this note down if you like. Otherwise, we will move on. So that is the first stage of aerobic respiration. It's called glycolysis. We now should be able to do um, each of these different things here. You can have a quick go of these questions. These will be uh, one of your tasks, which will be issued as an assignment on Teams. So don't worry, um, you, you can come back to this at a later point and these will be separate. But if you want to give these a go just now, feel free to do so. But we'll now move on to part two. And this is the breakdown of pyruvate. So this is the second stage of aerobic respiration. So we know that in the first stage, we took our glucose molecule, our six carbon glucose molecule, we split it into two smaller molecules, uh, which have three carbons, these are called pyruvate. So this stage is all about um, what these products go on to do. The ATP that was produced in the first stage, that can be used by the cell for whatever it needs to do. So think back to the last lesson, and we were, we were talking about some of the things that cells might use ATP for, things like muscle contraction, protein synthesis, photosynthesis. So this ATP can be used for any of those things, anything at all. The pyruvate that was produced in glycolysis, that is going to go on to the second stage of aerobic respiration. So remember we said that the second stage takes place in the mitochondria. So you need to think that in the cytoplasm, any glucose that had come into the cell, it's broken down into two lots of pyruvate. Those pyruvate molecules will then diffuse into mitochondria that are dotted around the cell, and they'll go on to the second stage. So in the second stage, all that happens is each pyruvate molecule is further broken down and when that happens, it releases 18 ATP from a single pyruvate. The problem is that when we break down pyruvate, the products would be, some of the other products would be unsafe, unsafe waste products. So what we need to do is we need oxygen at this stage because the oxygen is added to the hydrogen molecules that come from this pyruvate to make water. And we also get carbon dioxide, because remember, these circles here represent carbon atoms. So the carbon from this pyruvate gets added to oxygen to make carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide we'll get rid of, and the water we will keep if we need it, or get rid of it if we don't. But the main thing we're trying to get from this stage is the ATP. And remember, it's 18 ATP that is coming from a single pyruvate, 
but we had two pyruvates from that original glucose molecule. So that will go through the same process and we will get 18 ATP from this pyruvate as well. And that will give us a nice total of 36 ATP. And remember, we also had two ATP from our first stage glycolysis. So actually we get 38 ATP um, from each molecule of glucose. Now, don't worry about the number of ATP massively. You need to know that we get two ATP from this first stage, and you just need to know that we then get lots more ATP from the second stage, from the breakdown of pyruvate. Um, so this stage here, breaking down that pyruvate into this carbon dioxide and water, that is an aerobic stage. We cannot do this without oxygen because we wouldn't be able to make this water. Okay, we wouldn't be able to break the pyruvate down into these products without oxygen. So if we don't have any oxygen, we stop at this stage. We would not be able to break down the pyruvate. Something else will happen and we'll look at that in the next lesson. So this is the whole process here. Food, our glucose plus oxygen is broken down into carbon dioxide, water and energy. And that energy is ATP. This happens in two stages, glycolysis, which is down to this point here. Okay, that's our glycolysis. And then the second stage, the breakdown of pyruvate, is where we get the vast majority of our ATP. So in other words, aerobic respiration is far, far better because it gives us far more ATP. Okay. And there we have it. So that is our first stage, glycolysis. This is an anaerobic stage because there's no oxygen at all. But the second stage is an aerobic stage because we need oxygen to be able to form our water and our carbon dioxide. All right, what I'd like to do now is if you need, just go rewind this a little bit, go back um, and listen in again. But I'd like you to describe the second stage of aerobic respiration again by thinking about these questions. So take a look at them, pause video, and I would like you to try and answer them. Again, think about putting them into sentences so that you can look back at this and it will make sense to you later. Okay. So the second stage of aerobic respiration, if we think about these questions, where does the breakdown of pyruvate take place in a cell? The answer is that it takes place in the mitochondria of all cells. What gas is required to be present for the second stage of aerobic respiration to take place? This is oxygen is required. The third one, what is the substrate for this stage of respiration? It is the pyruvate, because the pyruvate molecules are broken down. The products of this stage of respiration, we have got our carbon dioxide and water. These are waste products but we also get the 36 molecules of ATP in total because it was 18 from each molecule of pyruvate. In comparison to glycolysis, how many molecules of ATP are produced from the second stage? Well, there's 36 in the second stage, but there's only two in the first stage, glycolysis. What controls the reactions in the second stage of respiration? It is enzymes. So all reactions at every stage of respiration are controlled by enzymes. And finally, what happens to the carbon dioxide and water? Well, these are waste products. So the carbon dioxide and water will diffuse out of the cell and they will be released. Now, if it's a big multicellular organism like us, then the carbon dioxide will have to diffuse out of the cell into the blood and then the blood will eventually make its way to the lungs and then we will breathe it out. The water, if it's not being used by other cells in the body, then it will make its way to the kidneys and we will get rid of that as urine when we go to the toilet. Okay, what I'd like you to do now, have a little look at this uh, sort of summary of the whole of aerobic respiration. And I would like you to copy that down and then complete any of the missing bits here, these spaces. Okay, you can pause the video and give that a go. 
All right, so your completed version should look something like this. So the missing words from the first stage, we have glycolysis at the top, which is the name of the first stage, glucose, 2 ATP, and these are both pyruvate. This is an anaerobic stage, so we should have anaerobic there, and this bit is for cytoplasm. It takes place in the cytoplasm. In the second stage, you should have 18 ATP on both sides and carbon dioxide and water on both sides. This is aerobic and it takes place in the mitochondria. Okay, so take one last look at the completed version and you should add that to your notes. Okay, calculate the total number of ATP molecules formed during the whole of the aerobic respiration of one glucose molecule. Explain how you got this total number of ATP molecules with reference to the number of molecules of ATP formed during each stage of aerobic respiration and describe what would happen if oxygen was absent. I'd like you to give these three questions a go now, so pause the video and give them a go. All right, so the answers to this, the first one is that the total number of ATP molecules from one molecule of glucose would have been 38. To explain that, it would be the two ATP from glycolysis and then two lots of 18, because there's one uh, for each molecule of pyruvate, you get 18 ATP in the second stage. So that's 36 plus two is 38. And then for the last question, if oxygen was absent, we would only get two ATP from the glycolysis stage. We would not be able to get the 36 from the breakdown of pyruvate. And that is it. So that is the second stage. Um, you have now looked at both stages of aerobic respiration. Um, the last question leads into our next video, which is what happens if oxygen is absent? If we can't break down that pyruvate, then cells have an alternative available to them, which is called anaerobic respiration or fermentation. So we'll find out more about that in the next topic. Um, but that is us for today. A few quick summary questions that you can look at uh, in your own time. And the answers to those questions will be available from your teacher. These will be an assignment. You will need to answer these questions um, and then your teacher will go through them with you. All right, that is it for today. You can stop the video.